The Mendel's laws of inheritance are as follows. The law of dominance and uniformity, that some alleles are dominant while others are recessive, and an organism with at least one dominant allele will display the effect of the dominant allele. The second law is the law of segregation. This says that during the gamete formation, the alleles for each gene segregate from each other so that each gamete carries only one allele for one gene. The law of independent assortment says that the genes of different traits can segregate independently during the gamete formation. While these are the basic principles of Mendelian genetics, it does not mean that they are universally and unconditionally valid. Yes, there are occasions and traits for which they are indeed very valid, but there are even more occasions, circumstances, where they are just not valid. For each of these laws, I will describe the situation in Mendelian genetics and then give a situation when these laws are not valid. The law of dominance and uniformity is often demonstrated with a mating involving two opposing homozygous individuals, with the F1 generation being heterozygous genotype but uniform phenotype to the dominant allele. The complete dominance is just one from the many, many interactions among two alleles. For this example, I will use the incomplete dominance, well visible in some plants. In this case, the crossing of two opposing homozygotes will give a uniform F1 generation, but the phenotype is clearly intermediate between the two parental phenotypes. The law of segregation states that, for example, a diploid organism with two of each allele produces gametes with one allele each. Yes, we know that there are some differences between the formation of oocytes and sperm cells, but ultimately we end up with haploid egg and sperm for diploid organisms. There could be some exceptions though. It is rather rare, but there could be cases when an egg or a sperm contains two copies or no copies of an entire chromosome, leading to the so-called uniparental disomy. This means that the affected individuals receive both copies for a chromosome from one parent and no copy from the other parent. The law of independent assortment states that alleles do not influence each other in any way and they segregate in all possible combinations with equal probability. This was shown by Mendel, for example with the color and the wrinkles of the piece. It certainly works that way in the two alleles that are far from each other on the genome and they are unlinked. What we know, however, is that alleles that are located close to each other on the genome tend to be inherited together much more often. This phenomenon is described and quantified with the so-called linkage disequilibrium or LD. We have talked a lot about LD also on the Genomics Bootcamp channel, so if you are interested you can find out much more in the videos in the appropriate playlists. For now I just reiterate that the inheritance for a large number of traits is definitely not independent from each other. And here they are, the Mendelian rules that are the foundations of the entire field of genetics, and also a glimpse into the advances which were made from 1866 when the paper of Mendel was published. Are you interested in more? Let me know in the comments below. For now, from my side, I thank you for your time and wish you a really nice day. This video was supported by the project number ATCZ278 with the title Gregor Johann Mendel's Legacy to Science, Culture and Humanity, which is co-financed by the Interreg Austria and Czech Republic. Down below you see the title of the project in German and Czech. Here I would like to take a brief moment to explain what the project is about, because it is actually an awesome one. The main goal of the project is actually to promote Mendel's legacy by long-term cross-border collaboration in science and culture. There is a strategic plan developed that will promote this legacy in the fields of science and culture in Czech Republic, Austria, but also worldwide. This promotion will take various forms, 
be it meetings, workshops, publications, audio and video materials. One of the main parts of the project is actually rebuilding Mendel's original greenhouse in the Augustinian Abbey in Brno. This newly rebuilt greenhouse will be a new landmark, not just the city of Brno or the country of Czech Republic, but the entirety of the scientific fields of genetics as such. Mendel's greenhouse is the very place where genetics was born with the first genetics experiment conducted on peas. Therefore, it is a really, really important location for the field of genetics. As a major outcome of this Interreg project, this greenhouse will become available for the general public, but also the scientific community as a multi-purpose gathering place for cultural and scientific events. This and much more you can find out if you visit the website gjm200.cz, which of course stands for Gregor Johann Mendel and the 200 indicating the 200th birthday of Gregor Mendel, which we celebrate in 2022. Once again, a great thank you to the project and Interact for the support of this video. Thank you for your time you spent on it watching. And from my side, I just wish you a very nice day.